Home play for tonight is uh, find the perimeter of the figure formed by the vertices, negative 4, 8, 4, 8, negative 2, 11, and 2, 11, and then the other uh, three figures. Copy that, please. Go. All right, so here we go. We're going to continue what we started yesterday. Uh, can we use the objective, please, uh, Chris? On three, one, two, three. I can solve the missing side of the right side of the triangle. All right, so uh, so you don't need a fair mouse since yesterday we covered already what a right triangle was and then what the pentagram theorem was, right? And yesterday I started it by giving you a fair model such as this. We cover that, and then you were supposed to come up with steps. I'm going to re um, do another problem together with you guys so that we can emphasize on the steps to make sure that we got all the, the steps written down. However, I'm going to start this uh, lesson off by approaching the Pythagorean Theorem a second way. Yesterday we saw the history of it, who came up with it, how they saw the pattern, and how we came up with the Pythagorean Theorem. But there's other methods. See, now I'm going to show you a different approach. So, on your Cornell notes, I want you to turn your paper over to the other side. And at the top left, I want you, uh, top left, not all the way to the corner, but at the top left, I want you to sketch a square. Make sure it's a, uh, at least two, at least two thumb size as big for each side, yes? And then I want you to place a point on the vertices. And we're sketching a square, okay? <coughs> Once you're done with that, leave a space to the right of it, about an inch, uh, about an inch or two, and sketch another square just like it. Yeah, also uh, plot your uh, vertices for that one. We good? All right, so check this out. I'm going to start with the left side, the, the square on the left side. And uh, this process that we're going to do is using the area model. And everybody's familiar with that, right? So check this out. First, I'm going to start on the left side here of that square. Halfway is about right here. I'm going to go a little bit further down, about right there. And I'm going to place a point. I'm going to label this long segment here is A and this smaller segment B. And I'm going to sketch a line across. There it is. Now I'm at the base of this square. You can see the base of that square. Halfway is about right here. A little bit further to the right is about right there. And I'm going to place another point there. Once again, the long segment is A. The smaller segment is B. And I'm going to sketch a line segment going all the way up like so. <coughs> Does that look familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Can you fill out the areas, please? Be just about done. <coughs> All right, check with the neighbor, see what they got for the area inside. Okay, here we go. Uh, Maria, what did you label this one? 
A squared. Hands we got A squared. That is correct. What did you label this one, uh, Jocelyn? A B. That is correct. About this one, Alexander. A B. How about this one? Chris. B squared. All right. Now that we have the areas labeled, I want you to skip two step um two lines underneath and on the third line I want you to write the area simplified here. Make sure you combine like terms. Write it in there, please. All right, share with your neighbor, see what you got. All right, let's see. What'd you get for the area simplified birthday boy? Let's see. A squared. Plus B squared plus 2AB. Hands have you got that in any order? That is correct. A squared is right here. B squared is right here. We have 1AB, 2AB. Two, two That's why we put it there. Or who remembers when I used to do the peanut right here? Yep. Yeah, and combine that, right? Okay. All right. Now let's go to the second square. We're going to approach this also using an area model, but a little bit different. So please don't go ahead of me. Wait for me to do something, and then you copy. Here it goes. Look up. So again, I go to this side of the second square, a little bit further down, which is right there. Place my point. The long segment, once again, is A. The smaller one is B. I go to the base of it, and once again, I place a point about right there. Once again, long segment is A. Smaller segment is B. But notice I haven't uh, drawn any line segments inside, right? Because I'm doing this one a little bit different. I'm going to go to this side now. Halfway is about right here. I'm going to go a little bit further up, about right there, and I'm going to place a point right there. Longer segment is A. Smaller segment is B. Now I'm at the top. Halfway is about right here, a little bit to the left. Long segment is A, smaller segment is B. Everybody there? Now check this out. We're going to connect the points that we just created. This one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, and this one to this one. It's a square. Damn. All right, so. All right, here we go. Look up to the screen. So pay attention to this part, because I want us to label the areas inside, like we did here. But this is a little bit funkier than this one. But I need you to follow me. Look up, please. Write your utensils down. Look at this area right here of this rectangle. The area is A, B. Is everybody there? So watch. Look up, please. So if I was to cut this and scroll it this way, can you see it here invisible? Okay, can you picture it there? Okay, so the whole thing from here to here to here to here will be AB, right? But we don't have the whole thing. What would you label that piece? Talk it over to your neighbor. What would you label that piece? Really? Really? I haven't seen it every day. All right, let's see. Danny, what would you label this piece? 
one half a b. Hands if you agree with that. Yes, because it's half of a rectangle, right? Yes. Therefore, if that's one half a b, what are all these other pieces also? One half a b, one half a b, one half a b. Okay, so we got that. Now let's connect it to what we saw yesterday. Look up, please. Does everybody see this triangle right here? This is a right triangle. Do you guys see that? Yeah. And according to what we did yesterday, this is A, this is B. Therefore, this side is what? C. However, we have a square in here, so what can we label this square? A, B, square. Squared. That is correct. Are we there so far? All right. Next. Skip two lines. And on the third line down here, I want you to write the area of the inside here simplified. Combine like terms. Go. I'll give you some time. Oh, you I remember. I know. I'm seeing. You said two thumbs. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone else is small. All right, let's see. What did you get for the area of this piece? Oh, first share it with your neighbor. See what they got. Four. Yeah. Oh, wait, two members. Let's see, um, Brian, what'd you get for your area? 2AB squared. No, we're, we're actually getting the area in here. You're close. Jaylene, what'd you get? Help her out, Kylie. 2AB plus C squared in any order. Hands if you got that. That is correct. How do we get that? What is 1 half plus 1 half? 1. What is 1 plus 1? 2 and then the C squared. Are we there so far? Yes. All right. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to put an equal sign between the two expressions. Now we created an equation. Now this is what I want you to do. Don't say it out loud. Keep it to yourself. This is you by yourself. Look at that equation. What would be the first thing you do if you were to start solving that? Do that next step and see what you get. Go. <laughs> I don't see anything. All right. Here it goes. Look up, please. So if we were to, sol to solve this equation, what do we usually do with when we have equations with variables on both sides? We need to get them all to... So which variables are exactly the same? 2AB. That means we need to get those together. So that means I need to subtract 2AB, subtract 2AB from each side. But this case, it cancels, so we're left with a squared plus b squared equals. <laughs> yeah, we're good? All right. Now, to illustrate it a little bit more, look up, watch what I'm going to do. So basically what we got rid of on this side is all the little triangles, right? Is that correct? Yeah. All right. 
And on this side, what we got rid of was the A, Bs, right? Does everybody see what I see? Yes, what we did yesterday, right? Some of you are like, what are we looking at? <laughs> Does everybody see it, though? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that's another way of approaching the Pythagorean theorem. So let's uh, move on. All right. So turn your paper over to the front. Let's do example 1B. Copy this, please. Where we did some of these. We did this last night for home play. And copy this one, example 1B. Let me zoom in. And I'm going to go over the process to make sure that we have all the steps the way you wrote them down on your Cornell notes. Yes? All right, good. Yeah, you wrote the steps down by yourself, right? Okay, good. Yeah, example 1B, and copy that triangle exactly how it is. Everybody done? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So we're going to do this one together. We're going over the entire process. Here goes again. Step one, this is what you did last night, right? Step one was A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Tell your neighbor what you would call that step. Write the Pythagorean theorem. That is correct. Step two, let's see. This one is A. This one is B. Oh, my goodness. Be nice. <laughs> B and this one is C. So you never what we would call step two. Identify. Identify A, B, and C. Step three. What would what do you think step three is? Substitute value. Substitute value. So this would be five squared plus B squared equals thirteen squared. What is step four, everyone? No, solve is the last step. <laughs> Simplify. So what is 5 squared? 25 plus B squared equals to 13 squared, which is 169. Now the last step is? Simplify. I mean solve. <laughs> solve. <laughs> so line down the equal sign. We need to solve for B. So what do I do, everyone? Subtract 25, subtract 25. We're left with B squared equals 144. And we take the square root to cancel that square. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So B equals plus minus 12. However, do we use a negative on this case? No. no. So when you label this, or when you give me your answer, it has to be B equals 12 centimeters because we don't deal with negatives for time or distance. So did everybody understand all the process? Yes. All right, tell your neighbor again the, the five steps in finding the missing side of the right triangle. Yes. All right, let's see. Leslie, C. Step one. Write out the Pythagorean theorem. Step two. Identify each value for A, B, and C. Step three. Substitute the values into the Pythagorean theorem. Step four. Simplify. And step five. 
solve for the variable. It doesn't matter which variable, but we need to solve for the variable, yes? So who noticed that yesterday we solved for C, usually, right? Yeah. So today we solve for B, okay? Hey, no. All right, so now that we're done with the easy stuff, just really quick to make sure that, we, uh, that everybody sees uh, how it's applied to others. Um, now we're moving on to what you're going to be doing tonight. So on your big graph paper, get the big graph paper, or some of you got the small graph paper. Doesn't matter as long as you uh, copy that problem on the top left. Top left. Here, pass that to. Yeah, I know. That was the last one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Be nice. All right, copy that example 2Q. It says find the perimeter of the figure formed by 2, 1, 6, 1, 3, 5, and 5, 5. You're copying that at the top left. Yes, copy the instructions. Oh, my goodness. Damn. All right, everybody copy that? All right, plot those points, please. Let's see, the first point was 2, 1, 2, 1, <coughs> then 6, 1, then 3, 5, then 5, 5. Okay. Now that we have that, they're asking for what? The perimeter of the figure four. So look up, please. Can you picture a figure formed by these four points? Yes. Question, are you going to connect these two, this one and this one? No. Because that goes through the center, which is what? The area. Are we looking at the area? No. So therefore, let's connect these points. Line segment here, line segment here, line segment here, and line segment here. So how many sides do you see? Four. Four. So to find the perimeter of any figure, you add all sides. So the perimeter is side plus side plus side plus side, four sides. What if it had five sides? Then it would be plus side, another side. Does that make sense? All right. So now that we have that, let's label our sides. What can we label the base of this figure? No, no, no. You should be able to come up with a measurement, right? What? Four. Four units. That is correct. One, two, three, four. Okay. What is the measurement of the second base on top? Two units. However, now the trick is these because these are parallel. Let me zoom in. You're like, so how can we figure that out? Actually, two. Look up. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Do you know what to do from there? Yeah. Yes. What is our process? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What do I do next, Nate? The side is four units. Okay, so basically we're going to label A, B, and C. Is that what you're saying? Identify A, B, and C. Okay, so B is four units. One, two, three, four, yes. So, so what is A? A <coughs> one. One unit. Okay. And of course, this long side that's across from the right angle is our hypotenuse, and that is C. So therefore, one squared 
plus 4 squared equals c squared. Simplify. 1 squared is 1. 4 squared is 16 equals c squared. Let's solve. This is 17 equals c squared. And how do we solve for c? Square root, square root. So we get plus minus something approximately c. Find me that something, please. And we're rounding to the nearest tenth, so you don't have to go too far out. Hands if you got it. Okay. Paul, you know what you get? Uh, plus minus 416. 4.1, which oh. is a tenth, right? Oh. Hands if you got that. However, are we going to use the minus one? No, we're going to use the plus. So you're going to label this side now is 4.1. So what is this side? 4.1. So now do we have enough information now to find our perimeter? Yes, yeah, so let's substitute into our, our formula for the perimeter. So the perimeter equals 4.1 plus 4.1 plus 4 plus 2. But since we found these two values, look up, this and this, since we found them using the Pythagorean theorem and then from there using the approximately, then you need to write perimeter approximately is 4.1 plus 4.1 plus 4 plus 2. That is 14.2 units. Do you see how we're connecting everything, what we did yesterday now to, to uh, polygons and so on and so forth? Yeah. Show me where the fingers all come through. You are with these. We've okay, got some five, 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 four, five, three and a half, five, 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 four. Okay, let's do one more, last one. Uh, at the bottom left of that same graph, I want you to write example two super cute. Plot these points and find me the perimeter. Let's do negative five negative 2, comma, negative 1, negative 1, negative 5, negative 6, and negative 1, negative 6. Plot your points and show me the perimeter, find me the perimeter for that figure. Huh? <coughs> Thank you. What do you mean? Everything I've left you is fun. There you go. Boom. <laughs> this is talent. Bam. All right, since so we ran out of time, what is the first thing we do? We need to write our formula for the perimeter. So it's side plus side plus side plus side. 
And then from there, we label our size. This is four units, four units, five units, and we need to find this one, right? Which means you need to draw your right triangle. Use the same process, but who noticed that this is one and this is four? Which means it's the same thing as over here, right? So what would be this length? 4.1. So therefore, my perimeter is 4.1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5, which is perimeter is approximately 17.1 units. Yes? All right. So your home play for tonight is only four problems. Um, there is no tutoring. Sorry. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. And there's the uh, home play right there on the screen. Have a good game, ladies. I am going. Woo, let's go.